Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of ESV TV. I'm joined once again by Coleman from The Sea. Mm -hmm. Thank you for keeping me here. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of a video about uh, the uh, RAID Manager software. Exactly. How to use it, how to set up a RAID, and actually delete a RAID in this first step. So let's go ahead and dig into it, maybe. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. So uh, here we have the RAID Manager. Um, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do to start showing it off is I'm going to go ahead and delete our RAID. So I'm going to say delete. Takes a couple of seconds. There we go. The RAID has now been deleted. Apple by default is letting us know that we have a bunch of drives available. So I'm just going to go ahead and ignore all those drives right now. But if I want, I can actually go ahead in here and say available drives and see all my drives individually if I wanted to. So, so this is a six big we're using, so six individual drives. Exactly. Um, if it was a two big, we'd see two different drives. If it was the 12 big, we'd see 12 different drives. Cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create the RAID now. So create a RAID. So we have two options here. We have quick and custom. In quick, by default, if there's only two drives available, it's going to create a RAID 1. If there's three drives or more, it's going to create a RAID 5. Okay. Uh, most people are probably want to stick to that. But I tell people, just go ahead and go into custom. Sometimes they're a little afraid. Um, custom is very easy with us. So let's go in there. Say next. So if I select one drive, of course, no RAIDs are available. As soon as I select a second drive, we're going to see we have the choices between RAID 0 and RAID 1. Each time we're going to see the capacity. So we're going to have 8 terabytes or 4 terabytes available and eight, uh, for another four terabytes for redundancy. As soon as I choose a, set, a third drive, RAID 1 goes away, and we have the choice between RAID 0 and RAID 5, and we see that capacities have now updated. So now 12 terabytes available, and RAID 5 would have eight terabytes available and four for redundancy. Um, that's going to keep on updating with how many drives I select. So all the way up to six drives, I'm going to see that I have 24 terabytes available. Um, in this particular case, I'm just going to go ahead and select five drives, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to go for RAID 5, Say next. Here, if we want to create multiple drives, uh, raids, we can give them each individual names. So I'm just going to leave this name by default, raid one, because we only have one raid on this product, so that's fine. Um, I left that extra drive unused, because yep. I can use it as a spare drive. So that means we're seeing drive six here. But if I would have left other drives available, we would have seen those appear as well. Um, the idea behind a spare drive is let's say you know, you're doing a long render during the weekend, and one of the drives fails during the weekend. It's unfortunate, but it can happen. Um, it's going to take that drive that's being uh, there as a spare drive. It's going to go ahead and start rebuilding the RAID right away. So you don't have to rush back and replace the drive to make sure your data is going to be secure again. You're going to get a warning if you turn on the notifications, but you'll know that, and you'll know that your RAID is already rebuilding, and you don't have to rush back. So it's going to do that all by itself. You don't need to do anything. Exactly. Um, it's one of the settings that you can choose in the settings section, but it's a good option to have just to, so you don't have to rush back, as I said. Okay. And even if you leave it running overnight or anything like that. The disk cache, that's going to speed things up. Um, we're actually using the cache from each drive. So that's 256 megs in this particular case per drive. And that starts adding up. That's a lot of data that might be there. Um, it speeds things up, as I said. But if that data is not written to the platters yet and the power goes out, that data is going to be lost or it's going to get corrupt. And we recommend, if you want to use that, to use it on a power, backup power supply. Um, if you don't want to use a backup power supply, you might want to turn that off or just take the risk of saying, okay, I'll take the risk. I want that extra speed because I need it. But just a quick warning there. Um, and we actually explained that right underneath here. Um, the stripe size, that's going to be the smallest block size that can be written to the drive. Um, in most cases, you want to be either choosing 128 or 256. In some weird configurations that some people want to use, um, we can go either way all the way from 64 kilobytes all the way up to 1024. So we leave the option quite wide. But in, as I said, most cases you want to choose 128 or 256. Okay. The initialization, this is actually going to make all, sure the drives are all in sync, ready to receive your data uh, in the RAID. So we have a few options here. So we have background, where it's going to give you access to the RAID, and it's going to be rebuilding, uh, doing that synchronization basically in the background, but still giving you more access to your RAID and the performance of the RAID. If we choose none, it's going to let you know that you can do it later on, and it's just going to rebuild, make that rate available right away at full performance. Sure. Uh, fast, it's going to go ahead and concentrate all its uh, perform all its uh, resources on building that synchronization as quickly as possible. Foreground is a little bit like background. The only difference is instead of giving you priority to the data, it's going to give priority to that synchronization. But you can still access the rate in the meantime, just at a lower performance. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and choose none. As, uh, we don't have time to let it rebuild. It's going to take a few hours. Say next. So here gives us a quick summary of all the options we selected. So if we're happy with this, we can go ahead and say finish. At this point, it's going to build the RAID instantly, pretty much. And I can go ahead and say initialize. 
That's the only last step that before we can access the, the RAID, we just have to format it. So go here, let's give it a name. Let's call it, let's see, six big and erase. It's gonna take a few seconds because we do have uh, 16 terabytes available. So let's give it a second. There we go, it's done. We built the RAID and it's really just that easy to do. Um, we kept the very visual and very easy to do. Um, we took our knowledge that we had with our NASA raids that we used to do in the past, which was also very visual, um, but we brought it to the desktop now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyone who's, who's not maybe familiar with the different raid modes available, why don't you uh, give us a quick explanation of uh, what they are? Okay, so yeah, you start off with RAID 0. RAID 0 is going to give you maximum performance. However, it's going to give you no security whatsoever. So that means in this particular case, if we're using all six drives in a RAID 0, it's going to be splitting off each file into six different directions. We're using the capacity of all the drives, and we're using the speed of all the drives combined as well. However, as I said, we're splitting that file into six parts. So if one drive fails, we've lost one sixth of each file. So, so super fast, but no no protection. Exactly. So even with five fifths of the five sixths of the file, you're not going to be able to use that file. It's going to be yep. unusable. Um, forget about it. Sure. Um, RAID one is basically going to use with two drives, and that's going to do a duplication of your data. So if one drive fails, the second drive has an exact copy of it. Um, next is RAID 5. RAID 5 is going to take the advantage of the RAID 0. However, you're going to be losing the capacity and the speed of one of those drives. And it's basically by, you're going to be using that capacity for redundancy. So that means if one of those drives fails, you can still access your data. Your data is still secure. Just put a new drive in. It's going to rebuild that redundancy. And you can keep on going. RAID 6 is going to be the same thing. The only difference is that's going to be losing the capacity of two of the drives and also the speed of those two drives as well. Sure. Um, but that means if one drive fails, pull it out, replace it. Let's say you're really unlucky, a second drive fails. Um, you're having a power storm or something like that, and that's uh, very unlucky. It happens, unfortunately, in a few cases. Well, that second drive is going to give you even more redundancy. So okay. even if the second drive fails while you're rebuilding the first one, your data is still secure again. Okay. And then RAID 10. RAID 10 is basically a RAID 1 plus RAID 0. So it's taking two RAID 1s and combining that with a RAID 0 in between. Um, RAID 50 is going to be the same principle as a RAID 10. It's going to take two RAID 5s. So let's say I have a RAID 5 on the first three drives and a RAID 5 on the second three drives. It's going to combine those two RAID 5s with a RAID 0. Okay. So there's a few more things I want to show in here. Okay. So now that we built the RAID, we have the array section. So I can go in here and I can see all the different drives where they're actually located. So if I had multiple drives, uh, multiple RAIDs at this uh, product, and for any reason I decided to pull them out of the chassis, put them into the new chassis or whatever, for any reason like that. Um, we're actually writing a little bit of information to each drive, so you're not going to break the RAID even if you mix up the drives. Okay. That's a very good feature that we've added with these new products. Um, but it'll also let you know, oh, that you put the RAID 1 drive down here, when it should have maybe been up here just for logic sense, but it'll let you know exactly where the drives are located in the product and which RAID they're part of. Okay. Um, some other things we have here are the device settings. So here you can really customize how you want to give priorities to certain things. Um, I can give uh, priority to the rebuild or turn on priority. Um, basically, let's say it's Friday afternoon, you're working on a project, and unfortunately that drive fails. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about bad things failing, but we want to make sure that we have as much uh, possibility to make sure that the user has the best experience if that does happen. Sure. So, yeah. um, so as I said, drive fails. You're working on a project, you need that performance because it's a 4K video file. Take that rebuild slider, bring it down to low priority, Keep on working. The performance is going to be a little bit slower than normal, but it's still going to give you pretty good performance in the meantime. In the evening, once you're going to leave the office, you might want to take that rebuild slider, bring it up to high priority at that point, yeah. and it will rebuild, finish rebuilding the RAID as quickly as possible at that point. It's going to give you a lot lower performance, but it's going to concentrate on rebuilding that RAID so you make sure your data is secure once again. Exactly. Um, we also have the audible alarm. So if something does happen, the product is going to let you know by LEDs, but it's also going to start beeping to let you know Hey, something's wrong. Yeah. Um, in some environments, like especially audio recording, you can't afford to have any beeping, even if it's like something going wrong. Make sure you have that take if it's only get one chance. Um, so you may want to turn off that alarm if you're working in audio conditions mm -hmm. uh, environments. Um, next, we have the app settings. The app settings basically just going to choose the language you want to use the software in. We have a lot wide selection here. So we have all these different languages. I'm going to stick to English because that's why I know best. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we also have the possibility to auto start. So that means when you turn on your computer, the software is just going to launch itself automatically. However, that's not needed. Um, sometimes it might not be nice to have it running just for those notifications and stuff like that. But once again, 
not needed at all. So I turned that off personally for my choice. Okay. Next we have notifications. So here we see some different things. We see that I deleted the raid a few times. Um, all these blue things are just letting us know that things are actually working well, that things are healthy. So um, we're not seeing it here, but we also have like a drive check and fan check. And it's just letting, you know, everything's working well. Um, yellow is letting you know that, oh, quick warning, you might want to look into this. So that's when we deleted the raids. Mm -hmm. And if something was really wrong, it'd be in red. And of course, we don't have any of that because everything's working great here. Um, we can also receive these notifications by email. By default, we use a Lacy server, so we make it easy for the user to just set it up. Just put in the email address where you want to receive this information, and it's going to go ahead and send out those emails. Um, we turn off information, informational uh, by default, because that's just going to send you too many emails. We leave warning and error on by default as well. Okay. So you can customize out however you want. If you don't want to use a Lacy server, and you want to use your own email server, we always, always have the possibility to go in here into custom, and you can set up all your information there and use it the way you want. Sure. So I can say cancel for now. And the last part that I want to point out is updates. So we have an update section because we realized that our previous raid manager, no one was updating their software or their firmwares on the product. Um, sometimes we can push out new firmwares uh, just to help increase uh, the performance of the product or just optimize some of the features. And we want to make sure that the users are up to date or if they ever do need contact support, that they actually know what firmware version they're on. So here we can see the software version, the firmware version, and if there's an update available, which in this case I left on purpose so mm -hmm. we can actually see what it looks like, um, we just click here and it's going to download that in the background. And once we're ready to update, we just click on update and it's going to go ahead and update that firmware. Perfect. So that sort of brings us through the whole uh, presentation of the software. It's very easy to use. We try to make it as simple to use. You don't have to be an IT professional. You don't have to be a system admin. Just keep it simple. And no one, oh, anyone can use it, so yeah. So that's great, so available on the site? Of course, it's available on the site. We don't ship it with the products because we want to make sure that the user has the latest version of it. So we just go to the product page, click on support, downloads, and you'll have access to the latest version. Perfect. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope that gave you a little bit of uh, an insight into how the RAID Manager works, how the software works, uh, what you can do with it. Uh, you can, you've seen that we can really customize it to however you want to work. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe, and we'll catch you again next time on ESV TV.